Today it's all about investing in condos. If you're thinking about investing in a condo in South Florida, and you probably notice there's a ton of them around, but they're not all the same. And there's a lot you need to know about investing in condo. So today we're gonna cover five things you need to know about investing in condo properties, what you should know. So hey, hey folks, go ahead and stick around and get the 411 because you're really not gonna wanna miss this. Hey, it's Kevin Morris of The Morris Group. This is your first time to the channel, then you are at the right place to know. Learn everything there is about living, working, playing, eating, sleeping, dancing, dining, and of course, investing in condo properly is what you should know. So folks, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe to our videos. Tap the little bell to get notified whenever we drop a new one. And it also tell other people know. And then if you have any questions while we're going along, feel free to drop a little note in the box below. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions. You can email us, you can call us, you can DM us, you can, Basically, I mean, you can shoot us a text or you can go ahead and skip all that hullabaloo, hit the Zoom link, schedule a call, and we can discuss anything and everything you want to talk about. So one of the most common misconceptions about condo rentals is they're all the same. And folks, they're not. Essentially, one of the most significant difference is the length of the rental, short-term and long-term. Today, we're going to talk about long-term rentals. These are ones that, as defined by the state of Florida, are typically more than six months in duration. But in reality, they can vary anywhere from 90 days up to many, many years. Now, one of the things we'll find out later on talking about the associations is that associations typically limit the amount of the lease term to one year and ask that leases be renewed. We'll get into that a little bit later, but today we're going to talk about, about the long term. The short term rentals, which are those that are anywhere from one day to 30 days, that's a whole different animal. That's a whole different requirements. They have special requirements from zoning to regulation to legislation to taxation to how they're paid. There's a number of different things that are going on there. If you're interested in short term rentals, um, we do a lot of work with them. Please feel free to reach out. You can go ahead and schedule a Zoom call and we'll be more than happy to talk your ear off about short-term rentals. We've done a couple of videos on them. Check our video library out. As I said, in Florida itself, there is no maximum rental term. The state of Florida does not regulate how long a, a lease is. It can be anywhere from one day, and in some cases, if we're talking about ground leases, for example, for co-ops on condos, again, another different topic that we're, we're discussing, somewhat related. If you have any questions about co-ops, please feel free to reach out, but it can be up to 99 years for ground leases. So as we said earlier, the condo associations themselves have basically, they've implemented a maximum lease term of one year. Now, that doesn't mean that the lease can't be renewed, and we'll get more into that when we start talking about the associations and their rules and regulations. But just from the standpoint of today's discussion, we're going to talk about long-term rentals. Topic number four, condo associations. So condo associations, are they your friend? Or when it comes to investing in condos and renting condos, are they your friend? Or are they your foe? So what you're going to find out in Florida is that every condominium complex has to have an has to be represented has to have an association, okay, which must be a Florida corporation, either profit or nonprofit, depending upon what they're doing. And there's a whole series of regulations around condo associations, how they're represented, how they have to be formed, and how long they have to do business and everything else. Okay. But but what this basically comes down to, the kind of the upshot of everything, is that every condo, every unit and every building has to be part of an association. Now, in some cases this can be a blessing, in other cases this can be a curse. So let's kind of talk about both sides of the coin here. If you're new to rent if you're new to, to, to condo ownership here in Florida, one of the things you'll find out is basically every association has its own set of rules and regulations, bylaws, and they also have their own way of doing things. So some of them are very owner friendly, some are very renter friendly, some are very, very run very, very well. Okay, and you can see those, and you'll see those reflected in activity in and around the, the, the condo building, the condo association. And some are not. Some are not very owner friendly, not very user friendly, not very renter friendly. They're poorly managed, poorly run, and you can also see that by driving. You'll, in many cases, you'll see that when you first show up by driving in, into the uh, actual property itself. And but as far as the renting, as far as rental, and the impact on leasing and stuff like that, the rules and regulations can be anything from super, super, super laid back, super easy to basically no rental restrictions whatsoever. Hey, you want to rent? Terrific. You can go ahead and rent. There's no minimum rental term. You can rent for a day. You can rent for a week. You can rent for a month. You can rent for a year. Okay. So some of the ones that are even more draconian than others that have gone out and basically says, you know what? You can never rent in here. So those are the, we're not going to worry about those because those are ones that, that are not basically prime for, for uh, you know, for this type of activity, for rental activities. But the ones that, that do allow renting, they do have a certain number, they do have some, some significant 
criteria that goes around that, some significant rules and regulations. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some of those you need to be cognizant of. Now, one of the things you're gonna find out if you're out looking at Zillow or you're looking at Realtor.com or Movado or anything like that is that if there are specific rules or specific bylaws around how long a condo can be rented, chances are it's not gonna make it there. Zillow and Realtor go back and they pull certain information from the MLS service. They also rely on for sale by owner folks that are selling their condos or selling their properties on their own to put the information in there and they pull certain information in there and they filter through it and basically they put the information out there that is the most the, the most interest to the greatest number of people and limiting whether or not a, a property can be rented and specific information about how long it can be rented doesn't appeal it basically cuts down on the appeal to a wider group of, of folks so I'm not saying it that this is hello I'm just saying it's basically the way that it is so one of the things you want to talk, you want to look at is get a hold of the condo, the condo association bylaws, get a hold of the rules and the regulations to find out what things are going on. Do they have specific requirements and qualifications? If you as a, an owner, a potential owner, had to abide by certain rules and regulations, maybe it's a minimum credit score, maybe it's minimum, maybe it's certain income levels, okay? Maybe it's the fact that maybe they won't allow trucks parking there, they won't allow motorcycles parking there. Folks, it kind of goes on and on and on. Um, chances are those same restrictions and those same regulations are going to transition to the tenants too. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. The other thing is, is that here in Florida, we have what is known as HOPA, Housing for Older Persons Act. It's part of the ADA and what it does is it's, it's there to counteract any type of age discrimination. What it really happens is many of the, the condos and many of the associations that have HOPA regulations around them means that nobody under the age of 55 can own or live in there or under the age of 62. Now again, like everything else, there are variations of this. Okay. In some cases, it's very, very, very strict. No owners. Everybody who owns, anybody who's owned the property has to be over 55 or 62 in some cases. The resident or the resident, just the resident has to be over 55 or over 62. And in some cases where they get even a little more strict, basically nobody under the age of 55 or 62 is allowed in or variants thereof. Usually it comes down to anybody over the, uh, anybody under the age of 18 is typically prohibited from coming in. So check those restrictions as far as age and as far as some of those demographics on that. The other thing you want to look about is does the, has a condo association spelled out any specifics about the lease term? Can it, is it a shorter term? Can it be rented every 90 days, every six months? How many times a year can it be rented out? Um, in some cases, you'll find, you'll find situations where the condo can be rented every 90 days, but it can only be rented one time a year. Okay, counterintuitive there. Um, in other cases, you'll find out where the, the condo can be rented as short as one day, but only one time a year. So it's just kind of all these kind of things. You need to look into this stuff. You need to ask your, your realtor that you're working with um, to, to dig in this information for you. This is gonna be very, very important. This is the first thing that you really wanna look at because this is gonna determine whether or not the, the condo that you're looking at is actually able to be rented. So the other thing you wanna look at, and this is very similar to if you were buying it, when you're buying the condo, just even if you were gonna be um, living in it yourself, okay, you wanna know about special assessments. You wanna know about, you know, are, are, there, are there additional fees or the deposits that need to, be, need to go in? In some cases, we've seen it where you'll have to go in and maybe you have to put six months worth of maintenance fees in an escrow account. In some cases, you may have to post a deposit of 250 to 500 to 750 dollars, okay, if to be to basically warrant moving in, okay. That's something that needs to be considered because you know you don't want to be getting into a situation where after you negotiate everything with your prospective tenant, okay, oh, and come back at the very last minute and say, oh, by the way, you need to post a 500 dollar deposit with the condo association that is there for damages that you may or may not get back at the end of the lease term not going to work very, very well. So you want to know these things up front. You want to make sure that you have all these things um, at, you know, at your fingertips and you've taken these things into consideration when looking at the condos that you are considering uh, for purchase for investment purposes. So some of the other things that you want to be looking at is are there special assessments? If so, okay, how are they being paid? Okay, if, are, they, are they lump sum? Okay, it's, and these are things that you need to factor in from the standpoint of your financials. We'll get into that in a little bit, but you want to factor those into the financials of looking at it from the standpoint. It may be that if you find a beautiful condo and it may be in a great location, okay, and it may be the perfect unit and everything else, but there may, you may, it may be sitting on a significant um, assessment that needs to be paid perhaps before you move in or perhaps it needs to be paid monthly over the next seven, 10, or 15 years. I'm not talking about community development districts. I'm talking about special assessments to the condo building, 
or in some cases to the association itself for any one of a number of reasons. Check into that, okay? For, for, specific, uh, for specific information on how to do that, okay? Please feel free to reach out. There are certain ways to do this the right way, and there are many, many ways to do this the wrong way that are basically gonna alienate. So, so reach out to us, drop us a note. We'll be more than happy to work with you. If there's something you're in, a condo that you're interested in and you wanna get more about the association, let us know. We've worked with a, with a number of associations down here in South Florida, okay? And we, we pretty much know how to work with them. We understand them, they understand us, so we've come to kind of a peaceful alliance here. So have we thrown you for a loop? For most investors, most, most real estate investors, the top three, the top three criteria, the top th three things that you look at first, okay, are location, location, and of course, location. And while location is important, okay, it's, it's not nearly as important as whether or not the property itself can be leased and can it be leased in such a way, okay, that you can make money. Because at the end of the day, that's why you're here. That's why you're listening to this. That's why you're interested in, in investing in condos. So, so you can have the greatest, the greatest location, but if you run up against an association that basically says, hey, no, no leasing here, or they make it very, very difficult for you to lease, okay, or they make it difficult for folks to move in, okay, that may not be in your best interest to move forward with that, with that particular with that particular condo. So location, you know, is one of the top three, but it's not the top one. You need to make sure that it's something that can be done. So and as far as location goes, the general rule of thumb is to look at look at what what your area is famous for. We're South Florida. We're famous for golf courses. We're famous, of course, for the beach. We're famous for the Everglades. We're famous for the Keys. We're famous for amusement parks. So what you want to do is you want to kind of you look at the location, look at locations that are going to give you access to ones that are that you think are the, are more important than others. And everybody has their own ranking of those. Okay, but you want to look for for locations that are going to be able to leverage as much of those key reasons for, for people to come down here. I can tell you, hand on heart, folks do not come down to South Florida okay to go out and walk around to a petting zoo or to a farm okay so uh, you, you need to look at what it, what's important about the area what the area is known for down here and the other thing you want to look at is would you rent is this an area that you would rent in is this an area that you would be interested in okay and if you're a beach person like Suzanne and I are okay then certainly what look, looking at investing in and around the beach um, it, it's something that may be of more interest to you than investing and then looking at and investing over near the Everglades that's not to say one is any better than the other okay but you've got to kind of use you know kind of which a little bit a little bit of your own personal personal touches on it okay so the next thing you want to look at, next thing you want to do is this is where your relationship with a, with a good realtor comes in, okay? Is you want to look at what's going on in that particular area. So let's say, for example, you're interested in the beach, okay? Well, we've got 121 miles of beachfront from in, in basically in South Florida here. So, I mean, are you interested in the beach in West Palm Beach? Are you interested in the beach at Fort Lauderdale? Are you interested in the beach at South Beach? Are you interested in the beach at Miami Beach? What about Pompano Beach? What about Deerfield Beach? What about Boca, Delray Beach, Boynton Beach? You kind of see where I'm going here? So you want to look, you want to kind of think about what, what you're looking for. The other thing you want to look at is where it trends. There are some areas that do very, very, very well renting. And there are other areas that for whatever reason don't seem to do as well. Some, in, some areas do very, very well from a short-term rental perspective. And again, we can talk about that in our short-term rental videos. Some other, other areas do very, very well with long-term rentals. So you want to look at what the trends are. How are things moving there? Is, are things trending up? Are things trending down? The other thing you want to take a look at is, is what's going on in that particular area? Are there a lot of improvements going on? The last thing you want to get caught up in is dealing with a bunch of traffic information or a bunch of road improvements or a bunch of infrastructure improvements that's going to impede your ability to go visit the property yourself and it'll certainly have an adverse effect on your marketing the property out to folks out to folks because when they come and take a look at it online which what everybody does nowadays if they see a bunch of bulldozers and a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, traffic cones out there that's not going to necessarily give them the picture that they want when they're going to be renting when they're looking to rent to move down to paradise down here so the other thing that you want to look at too is is kind of where the where the condo itself is is it close to the water is it close to the golf course is it close to a casino is it midway between all three is it close to the Everglades so one of the things you want to look at is condos that are as a rule of thumb condos that are closer to the water okay they have a little bit more expensive maintenance fee in there is something that needs to be considered the reason for that is basically they require a higher amount of maintenance closer to the salt water out in the sun, things you know, things get they fade quicker, things get damaged quicker. Okay, 
golf courses. Golf courses are, are immensely popular down here. So you'll see a lot of the condos are being built on golf courses. So um, they're, you know, they're not, obviously the golf courses themselves are not on the beach, but they're, they're relatively close to the beach. So you want to take a look at it from that perspective. A little bit cheaper than living on the beach from a maintenance fee perspective, okay, is a condo close to a casino. There's a huge, huge um, redevelopment effort going on in one of the casinos down here in Pompano Beach area that basically in 10 years and two and two billion dollars later okay you're not going to recognize it it's going to be a whole new setup so you want to make sure that you know that what's going on there take a look at that that's going to certainly impact the availability of property it's going to impact the price of property and ultimately it's going to impact the rentability of it because if they add a bunch of rental properties in there which they may very well Okay, that's going to adversely impact your, may adversely impact your ability to rent out your property. So take a look at what's going on. If you're not sure, and if you're not from here, reach out, find yourself a good realtor to, to help you out with this stuff. This is what we're here for. This is what we do. And if your realtor doesn't know or is not willing to do this, then you need to move along and find somebody who does know and who is willing to work with you on this. The condo itself. Okay, so a quick recap of where we are. We've looked for and found condos that will allow rentals. Okay, we understand what the requirements of the association are to basically be able to affect that rental. Okay, and we've kind of decided the locations of where we're looking to, to purchase our condos. Okay, so next big thing that comes up, okay, is let's talk about the building and the condo itself. Okay, so in the buildings down here, okay, one of the things you'll notice, and I read recently that, not too long ago, I read a, an article about condominiums the, and, and aging of the condominiums and these and all the things that need to be done, but it, it basically said that nearly half of the 1,500 condominiums that have over a, that are more than 100 units in the buildings in Palm Beach County and Broward County are over 40 years old, okay? Now, in Broward County, and then what that means is that, you know, they've been around for a while. And then also, and, and two-thirds of them, and in Dade County, most of the condos, nearly two thirds of them are over 30 years old. So again, they've been around for a while in the three counties. Now, not to dwell on it, but everybody's heard about the Surfside collapse. I'm not gonna go into it. Um, it was just a lot of things that went into it. But what the upshot is that in Broward County and in Miami-Dade County, Basically, what's happened is is that is that the counties have put forth legislation and regulation that starting every 10 years, starting at 40 years old, and every 10 years after that, the condos need to be inspected. Okay, we've been through the inspections where we live. We've been through it with with some of our clients that have bought. We've been through it with our clients that have sold. Okay, the inspections are very very comprehensive. It's something that basically you it's something that you want to have done so that you don't run into some problems later on. Okay, so but but essentially the, the Every 10 years, your, the, your building is going to be up for, for an inspection in Miami-Dade or in Broward County. So one of the first things you're going to want to check is if you're looking at in Miami-Dade or you're looking in Broward County is where where is the property that you're interested in? Where is it in that inspection cycle? If the inspection is just taken, taken has, has been completed, get copies of it. Find out what's going on. Find out if there are any problems with it. Find out if there are any assessments that were in, that were levied or any assessments that are being considered about it. Considered. If you're midway through the process, take a look and see where where things were at the last inspection. You can request this information. You can get the structural engineering report. You can get the electrical engineering report. You can get the mechanical and plumbing engineering report. Request that information. If you're not sure what to do and not sure how to do it, reach out. Let us know. We'll be happy to work with you on that. That information is very, very important because depending upon what happened at the last inspection and depending upon how things have been taken care of going forward, that's going to impact the next inspection. Okay, that's so important, important, imperative. Get that information. Now, if you're getting close to, to the inspection, whether it's a 40-year inspection or the 50-year inspection, or in some cases, 60-year inspection, okay, you want to sit down with your realtor and you want to sit down with the owner and you want to find out what's been going on. Are things being properly maintained? Are there any issues? Are there any concerns? These are things that are critical that, to know because this is going to impact not only your ability to possibly purchase it, but it may adversely impact your ability to rent it out. Let's say something goes wrong. Let's say we're at year 39 and the 40-year inspection is coming up next year. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you a story, and I swear this happened. 
they got ready. They were going for the uh, some friends of ours that live in a condo not too far from us. They were going through the 40 year inspection. Okay, and it came through, and most of the units, most of the uh, the, like the units, everything went through fine. There were a couple of units where there was some some uh, rebar showing uh, on underneath where the where the balconies were. So they had to basically tear the balcony down and replace the rebar and re put the re put the uh, the, the balconies back up again. Okay, this was a ninety thousand dollar assessment because it, they, it was not something that they considered in their reserves. Nobody ever really considered it, and we'll talk about reserves. But nobody ever really considered it as part of part of the reserves. There was it's certainly not anything that's covered by insurance. Okay, so there wasn't anything in there. What ended up the upshot is is that an, uh, a number of the owners, including our friends, ended up getting hit with this big assessment. It was basically nine thousand dollar assessment. Um, and they had two choices. They could either pay it up front or they can pay it out over a term. But again, this is going to add, this is going to skew your financials. It's going to skew that may skew the way that you that your that your potential renters perceive it. So find out what's going on. Find out what's happening. Ask those questions. Okay. Now, Palm Beach County, on the other hand, they have no they don't have a law like that. So I'll leave it up to you to determine whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I'm not aware of anything that's going on. You know, catastrophic in Palm Beach County. Um, it may be that that maybe that the that the building requirements are a bit, bit more stringent from the get go. Not 100% sure. Okay, but Palm Beach County, as I said, doesn't have it. Doesn't have any requirements like that. So that may factor into your consider into your decision about where to basically purchase a condo. This is where personal preference and personal likes begin to digress from what is optional, what is optimal from an investment perspective. If you're a beach person, for example, like we are, okay, there's a tendency to focus on the beach. If you play golf, which I attempt to do, there's a tendency to focus on hanging out on golf courses, okay? All that's really doing is kind of limiting because then basically you're looking for people who have who have interests interests that are the same or similar similar than to yours. That's going to kind of that's off the bat. That's going to basically restrict the group the group of people that you would be marketing your content your your investment property to. So again, think about it from the perspective of what's available. What's the area known for? Okay, and that transcends down into the condo itself. The next thing you want to look at is amenities. Okay, condo amenities. They, they, they run the spectrum, everything from basically, you know, hey, we've got a waiting pool to we've got a pool, we've got a clubhouse, we've got a fitness club, we've got a fitness room, okay? We have 24 hour security, it's gated. We have a doorman, okay? We have a, we have a chef on the present, on the premise, okay? The, the amenities go from, from, you know, from basically almost none to ones that folks can't really even imagine, okay? Um, I'll let you know, there's a cost for every single amenity. The rule of thumb is the more amenities, the greater the cost, and that cost is going to be factored into your 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 maintenance fee or your association fee. Okay, so keep that in mind. I mean, you may find something that's very very amenity rich, but then when you go turn around, and take a look, and you see that the condo itself is maybe four hundred thousand dollars, but you're going to be paying twenty two hundred to twenty five hundred bucks a month in maintenance fees. That's going to that's going to uh, weigh heavily. It's going to have an impact on the financials that you look at. From the standpoint of you know how much rent do you ask for how much rent do you think you can get what are your what are some of the other financial considerations on that so and we'll talk about that in the next section we get into into the finances the other thing is is that um, you want what you're looking for is you want to look you want to look for for condo types that are that are basically the ones that are the most popular to rent one of the things you really want to look at is is kind of the the the, the layout of the condo Okay, which ones seem to work best? Which ones seem to be the most popular? Okay, one of the things that we've seen down here from the standpoint of rental perspectives is two bedroom, two baths. These seem to give the most flexibility for the folks who are looking to rent. It may be that you have two folks, two people that want to rent as being roommates. Terrific. One bedroom, one bedroom, one bathroom for each one of them. Terrific. Maybe you're looking for folks as a small family, or maybe there's going to start a family moving in, so you have a bedroom and a bathroom for the parents, and then you have a bedroom and a bathroom for the children or the children, the planned children, okay? Maybe what is, what's happening is, is that you have a family that's coming down. Maybe if for, for purposes of taking care of somebody, maybe you're taking care of an elderly parent or an elderly, um, you know, or an elderly friend, okay? And you wanna have your own space, and they wanna have their space, okay? But you need to have it, you need to be close together so that you can take care of things. What we've seen, what we've seen over the past uh, past five or so years, is that the two bedroom, two bath condominiums seem to be the most popular, as far as being rented out. Now, um, I got a little story to tell you about this. Like we have some of the other things. Okay. We have one of our one of our YouTubers that have come that came down, and they were 
they were dead set on a three bedroom, two bath condo on the condo on the first floor. They were a little bit older, okay, and they really wanted to have the, the be the ability to be able to just where they wherever they went to when they went to the store or whatever else they can come in, park in the parking spot, and basically walk in. Okay, and we just did we we had a really difficult time finding condos that they like at the price point that was working for them. Okay, so we ended up so we ended up looking around and we, I just based I, I I almost we almost pleaded with them, hey, just humorous. Look at look at the two bedroom two baths. Some of the two bedroom two baths that they saw were so big and so and so roomy that basically it fit their it fit their needs and there were so many of them that basically it, it worked out well for them and they ended up finding a very very nice two bedroom two bath which they purchased and they moved into and since they've been into it for a couple they've been in a couple of years now they've looked at it for something else. They turned around rented it out and they found out what we said that renting out a two bedroom two bath um, in this particular case it was a short term rental. But renting out a two-bedroom, two-bath uh, was basically—I mean—it was scooped up off the market almost right away, and it's been—it's being continually rented. So even friends of theirs that want to come down and re and rent it out and live there have to basically sign up and get in line. So look at the condo types, look and find out from the realtors that you're working with what are the most popular ones in there, what are the most plentiful. Okay, obviously ones that are penthouses. Uh, there's only. A few there's only a few of them. There's only a few top floor units. Same thing with with uh, ground floor units. But look at look to see what's most popular. Look to see what's going to work best for what for for your intended audience. With the primary objective of most want to make money on your investment, there are some that are also looking at it from the standpoint of hey, you know what? I'd like to kind of live here a little bit myself. Maybe I come down after you know after purchasing it. Maybe I want to come down and I want to. Come down for a month or a couple months over the high over the high season over the, when it's cold. I'm originally, we have some folks that are originally from Massachusetts that one of the things they're looking for is when it gets really really cold up there in the winter time and the holidays, they want to come down here and enjoy the warm weather and the holidays. So that's so in some cases you're looking for for a property that basically meets not only the anticipated. Um, wants and needs uh, of your of your your renters, but also the ones that you yourself are interested in. So I, I guess the, the, when it comes to the financials, you really need kind of it really kind of boils down to what is the what is the wanted what is the what is the desired or needed return on your investment? Because at the end of the day, okay, we're you know you're purchasing a condo to be rented out as an investment, okay? And you're going to be looking at, you know, making money in your investment. That's that's the that's one of the overall objectives of what you're doing, of what you why you're doing this, okay? Um, you know, we've gone through a number of things that you need to consider, okay? But your number one objective in, in renting is in buying a condo for investment is to rent it out and to make money. You know, so from the standpoint of looking at what's desired versus what's needed, it's that's very, very subjective. One of the things that we look at, we we recommend what is known as a as a cap rate. Okay, we'll get into how it calculated, but anywhere between eight to twelve percent is a good cap rate on rent on an area like South Florida that has such act such an active rental community. And before we get into the details of that, I mean, just you can look at it from the standpoint of financial success. Or the financial viability, financial successfulness of the you know of an investment property you can be measured a number of ways. Okay, you can look at it from the standpoint of the cap rate. You can look at it from the standpoint of the ROI or the return on your investment. Okay, those are the two that we look at. But in many cases, that looks a lot of people look at it from the standpoint of you know what is the where's the location. Okay, is it in a great location that attracts a lot of people? Okay, um, there's a number of different criteria that people look at. We as I said, we use cap rate. We use ROI. Those are two very very different definitive, very, very tangible uh, measures of, uh, you know, of the success or of the profitability of your, the return on your, of your, on your investment. Let's get into cap rate. What cap rate really is, okay, it tells you what the return on your investment could be or should be. And what that really means is, and if you look at it from the simple term, it basically comes down to your net operating income divided by the market value. Okay, now that market value um, may or may not be what you paid for it. Hopefully the market value is greater than what you paid for it, okay? But in some cases the market value, depending upon how the market's swinging, it may be a little bit less, it may be a little bit more, okay? But that's what you want to look at. It's basically the net operating income divided by the market value, okay? Now, everybody's going to say this, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into it to begin with. Market value, yes, it is subjective, but you can get a very, very good idea as to what the market value um, of a property is by talking to a realtor. I mean, you can even go out and do some of the research yourself, but get a realtor, find out, you know, basically how many how many similar properties 
What are they selling for? How long have they been on the market? Those three things right there are gonna, are gonna give you a very, very good indication of the market value. So let's kind of take a look at an example from the standpoint of just kind of walking through it. Okay, so let's say you have a condo that's got a market value of 500,000. Okay, um, the net operating income is $48,000, which is basically that operating income is the net of whatever you've rented it out for, for the year, okay, versus whatever it cost you, cost, cost you to run it. So maybe you rented it out for, for 5,000 a month, okay, $60,000 gross rent, maybe it cost you $1,000 a month to basically all the expenses that went into it, okay, real estate taxes, uh, insurance, maintenance, utilities, maybe that was a, a, a thousand a month, okay, that operating income, 12,000 is, is basically 48,000, 60,000 in rent, less than 12,000 in expenses, that operating income. If you divide the 48,000 by the 500,000 uh, market value, you're going to get basically a cap rate of 9.6%. Now, so it, it kind of gives you a good idea, a good idea where, you, where you're at. Okay, very, very easy, very, very simple. And in fact, many cases, when you reach out and talk to a realtor and they're, you're looking at buying a property that is already set up for an investment, which many folks do, okay, then th that, that's one of the things that that realtor should be able to provide to you very, very quickly is basically, you know, you know what the market value is going to be. We'll use the price you're going to pay for it. Okay. You can very easily calculate what most of the expenses are going to be. You know the taxes. You know how much insurance is going to be on it. Okay. You got a good idea what the of what the utilities are. Okay. So you can kind of calculate it out pretty pretty good. Again, we look for any for a cap rate between eight percent and twelve percent. Eight percent on the low side. Okay. Maybe that's for properties that are a little bit lower in price. Okay. And that may require a little bit a little bit more effort, a little bit more work on it. Okay, twelve percent. If you're getting into properties where you've, you know, you're getting into the six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar condos, a million plus dollar, million plus condos, and you have a good control over a lot of the utilities that are going on there, it's not unusual to see cap rates of 12, 13, 14 percent on million dollar condos. The next big, the next key indicator, the next key measurement is going to be ROI, return on investment, or ROI. And the difference between ROI and cap rate is basically the ROI tells you what the what the return on an investment could be or should be over a period of time. Typically with real estate, it's measured in years, okay, I'm kind of in alignment with depreciation, but it's also, you look at it from the standpoint of this kind of gives you an idea as to, you know, what, what the return on your investment could be and, and over time what it should be. And it gives you an idea as kind of a, a, a metric so that you can determine whether or not it's performing to the way that you had expected and also and after, after a couple of years, is it, is it performing the way that you need it to perform to? So ROI is a little bit different. The way that you calculate ROI is, is again, a little, it's a little bit different than the way you capital, calculate cap rate. But let's go ahead and kind of use that same, that, that same uh, example that we used before on the $500,000 condo. So we look at the same $500,000 condo, okay, and thanks to your savvy realtor, us, we got a, you actually paid $475,000 for it. So um, from that perspective, you've already got a nice little chunk of equity in it, which is terrific. Okay. But essentially, the, the, the purchase of that, con, of that condo, assuming we purchase cash, okay, is there's $6,500 that was paid in closing costs. Okay, And before you rented it out, you decided you wanted to spruce it up a little bit. Okay, So what you did is you went ahead and put $5,500 into it. The same point, I'm going to paint on, paint on the walls, okay, and you upgraded some of, the, some of the appliances to just make it more marketable and more, more visually appealing. So you got $5,500 into it from the standpoint of some improvements. $6,500 into it from the standpoint of the closing costs. So your total costs going into it are $487,000. Now, we already know what our return are, what our net operating income is going to be, basically our annual rent versus what our annual expenses are. We know that that's $48,000 a year, okay? So whereas with, with ROI, what you're doing is you're taking the net operating income of $48,000 a year and you're dividing it with what the acquisition or the cost of the condo is, okay? So in this case, if you divide 48,000 by $487,000, okay, you're basically looking at an ROI of about 9.8%, nine okay? Which is terrific. I mean, there's very few, there are very few areas where, you, very few investments where you can invest in that you can consistently get, you know, 9.8%. Now, keep in mind, okay, as you've had this property over time, Okay, and as you found ways to kind of control costs, and as the value of the property increases, your cap rate is going to go up. Hopefully, your ROI is going to go up too because that property becomes more valuable. Here in South Florida, we're looking at 
anywhere between 10 and 15% rent increases each year. So let's take an average of 12.5% rent increase. So that operating income is going to go up each year, whereas the acquisition cost, cost is going to stay the same. It's going to stay the same until you actually make some improvements or until you actually add and put, make, a, make an investment into the property itself. Your ROI is going to be 9.8% at the end of year one. And if you continue to go down that same path where you're re leveraging rent increases and you're controlling expenses, your ROI is going to go up every year. Keep in mind that operating income is going to go up every year because of rent increases. Okay, it should go up significantly because of your ability to control the expenses. Okay, and until you make improvements in the property, which may not be for five, six, seven years, okay, your acquisition cost is going to stay the same. So your return on your investment should go up every single year. Condos, condos generally appreciate in value, and that's actually true about any piece of real estate, except those that are on wheels or those that come from a trailer park. So um, you can, and one of the best locations consistently for event, for rental properties has been and for the foreseeable future will continue to be Florida and sp South Florida in, sp in specific. So um, Florida has been known and South Florida has been known as some of the most profitable areas in the U.S. for rental properties consistently. So we hope you found the video interesting. We hope you found it informative. And we hope you found it educational. And if you did, we would love for you to consider subscribing to our videos. Go ahead and hit the little bell to get notified whenever we drop a new video. And let other folks know what's going on. Okay. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free. Email us. Give us a call. Drop us a, no, a text. Okay. Or as I said before, you can kind of skip through all that hollow blue. Okay. And go ahead and schedule a Zoom call. We'll be happy to go through any and all questions you may have about real estate investment or any other real estate related issues that you may or questions you may have. So, and until next time.